We called for this press conference to basically update the nation and members of the media following uh, letters that have been circulated on the internet where the impositor uh, Chabangu, as he has been known in the political market in this country, has uh, released a letter purportingly recalling uh, councillors of the Citizens Coalition for Change. And we felt that it is important in light of this development to assert these following three critical facts to members of the media and Zimbabweans. Uh, the first thing we wanted to update the nation on is that the party in October last month took to the High Court of Zimbabwe in form of a High Court summons against <coughs> Chabangu, uh, who is an impositor who has been claiming for the past few weeks and has rose into fame in our body politic as the Secretary General of the Citizens Coalition for Change. The party took uh, this legal route to ensure that we protect our organization and our movement and therefore we actually received an update just yesterday uh, that uh, in relation to that High Court application, uh, Chabangu, the positor, has responded and we expect that issue uh, to be had at the High Court of Zimbabwe. Pursuant to that, our legal representatives, um, Obey Shawa and his team, have actually been engaging parliament and local government ministry to make them aware that there is a lawsuit uh, against uh, Chabangu by the C party um, uh, to ensure that, number one, they don't take any correspondence from this impositor. Number two, to make it aware to them and to reiterate our position that C does not have a position of the Secretary General and that Chabangu uh, is not part and parcel of the leadership collective of the Citizens Coalition for Change. And thirdly, to confirm that the Ministry of Local Government and more importantly, Parliament Speaker, Honorable Mudenda, an officer of the law, uh, should not act to any correspondence that come from Chabangu. We did not only end there, we also engage other critical government departments and other stakeholders and fellow citizens to disregard any communication that come from Chabang on the issues and the reasons that I've stated above. That he is not the Secretary General of the Triple C and he does not represent the Citizens Coalition for Change. And he's an impositor who acted on fraud. And I will take this opportunity actually to remind the Zimbabwe Republic Police and send our plea to the police that please act on the matter that we reported to the police. He's a fraudster and he's a criminal offense. And we've written to the police, we've reported the matter, we've shared with the media the RRB number, and we expect that the police, in their traditional professional manner, investigate and arrest this fraudster who has taken over illegally the movement of the citizens, particularly our intellectual properties, uh, our signatories, our logos, our symbols and going berserk in different offices, masquerading as an official of the Citizens Coalition uh, for Change. So in that regard, we want to assure citizens um, to be steadfast, watch our citizens, we assure them strongly as their movement that we have taken important steps both domestically, regionally and internationally to ensure that we protect our movement and protect our people. This plot that you see is a broad manifestation of the constitutional crisis that has visited our country. That constitutional crisis is born out of Zimbabwe's disputed election. The attack on the authentic opposition is born out of disputed election. An election that we won, an election that we defeated Mr. Mnangako and Zanupiev. That's why you have seen them attacking them. Why are they attacking Triple C? They are attacking Triple C because they don't want an authentic opposition in this country. They want an opposition that they can control. And that is the character of authoritarian regime world over. 
that we must have an opposition that we control. We have refused to be controlled by our opponent. ZANU-PF is our competitor as a political party, and we don't be taken into being their player or their partner. We are an authentic alternative in this country, driven by the agenda to see change and transformation in this country. That's why you are seeing them now taking impositors, giving them temporary powers to try and masquerade them as leaders of the alternative. Anyone in the media can testify to this. You have followed Triple C since his inception from the 24th of January 2022. No journalist can confirm in their knowledge that they have seen, no Zimbabwean can confirm that they saw this impositor in the rank and file of the alternative. What does that do? It confirms the circus that has been born out of this constitutional crisis. How do we reduce a country into a joke of a nation where we disregard electoral politics and electoral democracy because of the agenda to try and undermine and opposing voices? That is what is happening in our country. You can testify fellow Zimbabweans and fellow citizens. It is clear for all who care to listen, to understand in our history of campaigning, we launched this party, went into a by-election in, in 2022. We won these seats, citizens supported us, went into this election, came up and tried, we made sure without doubt that we frustrated Zanu's attempt for two days majority. And that's why we're being punished. That's why they've picked, but that's the character of the Italian regime, to pick an individual and give them powers over the citizens' project. That's why you see all this. We are spending five million US dollars. That is the money that has been budgeted by ZEC just for the by-election of the uh, uh, nine members of parliament and councillors that is oncoming. That money is coming from taxpayers' money. That's why this issue is not a triple C issue. It's not a partisan issue. It's for all who care about democracy and the future of our country. Right now, we have problems in our country. Look at the state of our health facilities. People are dying of diseases that could have been dealt with, but taxpayers' money is being spent on uh, uh, political issues. Why should our country be left in slow in for five years? This country has been arrested by vicious cycles of disputed elections. That's why we have said, and we communicated with regional players because the crisis in Zimbabwe has a bearing in the region in terms of regional stability because the majority of Zimbabweans, when they see all these failed political maneuvers by ZANU-PF, what does that happen? People leave the country as political and economic refugees and it has a huge bearing in the region and therefore that is on that basis that we've engaged the region so that they help us. While we are using domestic avenue to resolve the crisis in this country, we also engage the region so that we pivot the crisis in Zimbabwe and you can see without doubt that this crisis has escalated. You can see without doubt that there's an attack on the authentic opposition, that there's an attack on citizens' power because when you close all democratic avenues of people to choose leaders, all democratic avenues for people to raise their voices, you set your country into a path of instability. And that is what we are avoiding as Triple C, that was what we are avoiding as visionary and statesman leadership in the form of Advocate Nelson Chamisa. That's why we've given peace a chance, and that's why we believe that there must be engagement so that we're able to resolve uh, these issues. Thank you very much, members of the media. Unless there are questions, uh, our intention was to come here and clarify in terms of this important step that we've taken in relation to our illegal ethical members of parliament. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Tafazwa Nikadzino from State of the Nation News. Uh, there are reports that uh, the Chabangu Debeko is uh, born out of internal squabbles. And earlier on today, we saw a tweet from Opo Chimono uh, highlighting that you had uh, some form of communication uh, verifying these uh, reports that there could be some internal squabbles that are resulting in, in what we are seeing today. Uh, what is the state of your internal politics in CCC right now? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you want to twin that question? Yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, so, you know, so, additionally to what you're saying, I wanted to find out uh, on the internal position relating to uh, the harmony or the disharmony pertaining to uh, honorable delegate and honorable washman movement because there are some issues relating to some. Uh, Members or sympathizers of the CCC who are already. This thing that you are seeing is a ZANU PF issue. It's ZANU PF 
that is attacking the authentic opposition. Why are they doing so? All signs are clear. Triple C defeated ZANU-PF in this election. We rejected the election results because we are very clear that not, it's not only a triple C issue. SATAC has confirmed and noted the report on Zimbabwe that the election in this country were not credible. So what are they doing now? Like any authoritarian in the world, they are going after triple C, were being punished for defeating ZANU after the charade that happened in the election. So it's an engineer program by ZANU to try and destroy the authentic opposition in this country. We are very clear we're not going to accept that. We remain focused. Our goal, you must understand why these blows and goals are coming against us. It's because our objective is to attain political power and govern differently. So they don't want people who govern with a the difference. They don't want people who change the lives of ordinary people. So because we have put propositions to Zimbabweans who have accepted Triple C as a genuine alternative, that's why we are being punished. It is very clear in terms of how we communicate. I communicate with members of the media and fellow Zimbabweans through these official platforms and communications channels. And we have read to you what is our official position as Triple C. And obviously, you know and understand that when you read to us, we respond to you officially as a movement. And we have given you the official position. Individuals, my brother, look, we are different from Zambia. We don't discuss and debate individuals, we debate issues. What are the issues in this country? Number one, the election of the 23rd was a sham, was shambolic. It failed to meet constitutional, regional, and international standards. Second, Zimbabwe has entered into a constitutional crisis because of our inability to resolve the vicious cycles of disputed election. Number three, what we must know as, as Zimbabweans is that we must be able to resolve this problem of elections. This country cannot be arrested by vicious cycles of elections. We can't be an election nation. That is the problem that Triple C intends to address. And we pitch our propositions there. What individuals decide to do, I speak for and on behalf of the ordinary people, on behalf of the oppressed. And I will take this opportunity to make you aware who are these people, who are the drivers of the alternative as led by advocate nation James. It is the oppressed. It is the downtrodden. Those people who wake up at the blessing of an empty stomach and a jobless existence because of failed to state, those are the people of Triple C. Those are the drivers of this alternative. It is civil servants that work like you, my brother, from 8 a.m. up to 5 p.m. and getting a salary below the poverty atom line. Those are the drivers of this movement. That is the vehicle of the oppressed. It is the members of the media in the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Services who are sexually harassed for them to be promoted. <laughs> Those are the people we represent as a movement because it is the vehicle of the oppressed. Why should people be harassed instead of merit being at the center of people? Why should we as politicians be subjected to harassment because of holding a different view. This is the vehicle of those that believe in a future of this country, who believe in transformation. Mm -hmm. This vehicle, my brother, is for civil servants who work in the bureaucracy of the state, working every day and getting a salary below the bottom line and getting bonus when the elites are giving themselves US dollar uh, salaries. This is the movement for those people. The movement of students who cannot afford tuition fee. Those are the people and those are the issues we represent and those are the issues we discuss because we offer an alternative to change the lives of these people regardless of their political orientation, regardless of their past, regardless of their religious view, regardless of their racial orientation. Triple C is the vehicle for those people and those are the issues that define us and that is what makes us an authentic opposition. And we are receiving these blows because of believing in those values, because of believing where we stand. And people would ask, are we shocked? Are we flabbergasted? Are we in panic because of the attack? No. When we formed this organization, we were conscious that as long as you form an authentic resistance, an authentic vehicle against detectorship, you are going to be attacked. We never expect this thing to be a one-day wonder. We never expect this thing to be a rose walk in the park. We went into the election knowing fairly square that it is a sewer pole, and we don't expect to come out smelling like roses. Someone will ask, why then do you continue going into the election in the context of the mirage and challenges that we face? Our method of struggle as Triple C is we use elections to change governments. We are a non-violent democratic party which believes that elections are the vehicle to change government. We are going to context all elections in this country 
whether they are done underwater, whether they are done on ground, we are a democratic party that believes on election as a vehicle to change the lives of ordinary people and change governments. Thank you very much. No, just a follow up. Okay. So in short, do you deny the existence of internal officials in CCC? I felt like you just meandered around the issue. I assumed, my brother, that you are an investigative journalist who understand, my brother, fairly well that any organization, including the media center we are in, there is no organization without exception, without contradictions. In this world, you, my brother, if you are married, you and your wife will always find points of disagreement. Those points of disagreement don't mean anything in the bigger scheme of democracy in our country. We can debate, we have had our debate in the party about which color we should choose. Then if you report that a certain leader has a different view on the color we should choose, then you want to say there are fissures. There are no fissures, there are no contradictions. We are a democratic party, we have discourse, and we defeat each other at the level of superior logic. Our difference with our opponent is that we don't criminalize holding a different view. So we, everyone in the democratic movement, the Triple C, has an opportunity. That's why we have the Citizen National Assembly as one of the important governing bodies of the party to debate. When you come to those meetings, you think we don't meet eye to eye because we want to debate and sharpen our views on how to rescue Zimbabwe from this crisis. And naturally, my brother, me belonging to the Apostle Faith Mission of Africa and you belong to SDA is a point of difference, right? But we are brought together by the idea of change, brought together by the idea of making the lives of ordinary people better. So that, I hope, we, uh, sufficiently answered uh, that question. Um, yes, my, my name is Bruce uh, from uh, Who is Maxwell Omen? Yes. Yes, I'm PJ Nagori with Canal TV. Um, yesterday, Mr. Chabang was speaking to us uh, as an RCB and said that uh, he had engaged to face the advocate Chanisa. And uh, can you please confirm if that is true? And if it's true, what is the nature of the relationship and how did the conversation go? Thank you very much. I'll, I'll start with the question on uh, Munamu, I don't know the person. Uh, I'm sure you followed Triple C. You have not heard that name yourself, unless maybe in other pre private conversation. We don't know the same individual. I don't know if the triple C does not know uh, the same uh, individual. Um, the question on the engagement. Yes. Um, look, President Chamisa is focused uh, on the task to make sure we make a resolution as a movement that our post-election agenda is in and around building a credible alternative. That is what we are focusing on, and President Chamisa is a visionary of this movement, is spearheading that process in the presidency, and that's what the president is preoccupied about. Uh, individuals can always say, you know, whatever they want to say. Look, when you put a tourist on a lamp post, what happens is that the confusion is not on us who are viewing the tortoise. The confusion is with the tortoise itself. Because it, it, does it, it is worried, why am I here? And more importantly, how do I climb down? Because I don't have the wings to fly. So that's why you see all this confusion. And let me debunk one of the confusions for the benefit of the media. So the impositor comes up and say, we have called, people are calling me, they are saying, uh, uh, look, let me say it very clear, on behalf of the triple C members of parliament mm -hmm. and council deployers, no one has time for the impositor. People are very clear. We campaigned as Triple C. We know our leadership. We know each other. We have no time. There is no need for a member of parliament to be brought to try and justify themselves. They know where they stand. They are very clear. We are in parliament. Our mandate as members of parliament is fundamental on two things. And if you had followed parliament debate yesterday, you would tell why we are in that parliament. Number one is to make sure that we hold the executive to account. And we are doing so without favor. We are doing so without fear, and we are prepared to do so with our certain plan. Number two is to make sure that we represent our constituencies, and that's what we are doing by crafting a proper law. That is our agenda in Parliament. Members of Parliament are very clear on that responsibility, and they know you cannot wake up, my brother, today and want to try and tell me that my mother is Mrs. Gumbo. Mrs. Gumbo is not my mother. My mother is Mrs. Sisma. It doesn't change. That is a fact. Even if you decide to paint it 
or tell each other in different corridors on who my mother is. I know my mother, I talk to my mother, I remain with my mother. And with my colleagues in the family, we are very clear. We are decisive, we are united on the agenda to win Zimbabwe for change. We are very clear. We speak for and on behalf of those people. They shouldn't be dragged to speak in their individual capacity. We speak post our leadership collective. We speak through those designated with the certain Peru. So we are very clear. We are very happy. We meet in different platforms. We are focused. There's not going to be any effect on members of parliament that are said to be record. There's not going to be any effect on our councillors. Councillor Ian Macron is going to continue with these responsibilities because we've taken the issue of the imposit at the court and made it very clear to the court that to see who you are, this is our parliament. Uh, you previously claimed that uh, the courts are biased, but uh, it seems that you always go to courts if you have maybe squabbles or anything that happens to you, but why do you do so? You know why we do so, my brother? We are not a terrorist organization. We are a constitutional part that believes in Chapter 12 institutions, that believes in rule of law, that believes uh, in making sure that we take all the necessary legal steps when there are problems that we are confronted with. It is very clear to us as a movement we might have problems with certain decisions that might be made, and every judgment, we respond to every judgment that comes from different courts in our country, every decision that comes from different organs of the state, we respond to them from case to case. Because we are a constitutional party, we exhaust all those avenues, because the court is a theater of the struggle for the people. Parliament is a theater of the struggle for the people. Council is a theater of the struggle for the people. And we must make sure that we exhaust all those avenues. That does not stop us from using other avenues. We have avoided the temptation of breeding instability in our country because we are responsible for leadership. And that's why we are, so it doesn't mean that we have problems. We mentioned problems with the commission. It's not a triple C issue. If ZEC fails, it's fidelity to the country. It is failing Zimbabweans. It's not a triple C issue. Why should ZEC fail triple C when it is funded by taxpayers? It is failing the ordinary people. It is failing the oppressed. And I conclude with you, my brother, on your question, it is very clear. Those who want to advise the party ought to have a conversation with the oppressed because this movement is driven by the oppressed. It is owned by the oppressed. So the discourse must be within and among us with those that own this movement. And any strategic move that the party takes announces to its people. So people can hold their views on what they think. You agree that this issue has generated conversations in our country and everyone is interested about it, and everyone has different views. That's why we meet with the citizens. That's why we talk with the people. We had a different view as a leadership collective about participating in the by-election, because you know, without doubt, that we are spending taxpayers' money in that election, but citizens are very clear, and they detect the political program of our party, because we are citizen-centric, we are citizen-based. Every political decision we make has to be with the people, we have to consult the people and the people to check the strategic direction and the strategic focus of our people. <laughs>